More than one and a half million dollars worth of cash and artifact donations helped to sustain Singapore's heritage sector last year. Oh, that's nearly half the amount received in 2020. The contributions came from just over 30 individuals and organisations, again around half the previous year's tally. These patrons have been honoured at the National Heritage Board's Patron of Heritage Awards. NHB says the reduced donations could be due to limited museum and heritage offerings because of the pandemic. Still, Culture, Community and Youth Minister Edwin Tong says these contributions helped galvanise spirits at a time when inspiration was sorely needed. Amongst those recognised are a late philanthropist whose lifelong contributions helped deepen appreciation of Peranakan culture in Singapore. Others include the software firm that brought the former Tanjong Paga railway station to life through a virtual reality experience, and prolific photographer Russell Wong, who donated 79 prints of Kyoto to an exhibition at the Asian Civilizations Museum. Let's speak to Peter Lee now. He represents the family of the late philanthropist Agnes Tan, who was one of tonight's awardees. Good evening, Peter. Thank you for joining us. Such important contributions. Share with us the significance of the artefacts which your late aunt donated to the NUS Baba House last year. Uh, hi, Dawn. Um, thank you for having me. Um, the objects um, are actually quite diverse and um, I think they represent the spirit of uh, Baba House mission, which is to... Um, I mean, that Pranakan, to see Pranakan culture as a launching pad to understand other cultures. And basically also, in a way, to see how everything is hybrid and connected. When we look at one object, it doesn't really tell just one story from the maker to the end user. And uh, so these wonderful objects tell the story. So, for example, we, uh, my aunt supported the uh, purchase, actually bought and donated a pair of mirrors to uh, the uh, to the Baba House. Um, what's interesting is they actually belong to a house on the street. And uh, when the owners conducted an auction, uh, my aunt was able to secure the purchase of it and donate it to Baba House. A mirror like that would feature typically in the ancestral hall and the entrance hall. So, um, and they're extremely rare. So to be able to secure something like that for the NUS Baba House was quite a victory. Uh, there's also this beautiful lacquer box um, showcasing the kind of objects that would um, end up in Singapore that were made in China to beautiful ancestral portraits like this. This example came from Indonesia. And it sort of tells a little bit of the introduction of um, Chinese portrait painters um, into Southeast Asia in the sort of mid 19th century onwards. And they, you know, kind of adapted realis the realism from Western painting and photography to create a sort of new nascent kind of a style of painting that was local or, you know, made in Asia. And what was interesting is these artists were traveling all over the region. So it also created this sort of commonality, not only here and with connections to Indonesia and Malaysia where similar artwork is found. So, you know, one artwork, although we can look at it as Pranakan, actually connects it to so many stories. There's so many stories uh, and unique ones uh, behind each piece. Tell us something about your late aunt's love and pursuit of these pieces, uh, Peter, what did they mean to her? Well, actually, they were not, you know, something, they did not belong to her personal collection. These were objects that were uh, specifically bought for the NUS Baba House. Um, ever since she donated the money for the purchase of the house uh, to, the, to the university, she's been actively supporting acquisitions. Um, and these not only include uh, outstanding examples of uh, Pranaka material culture, but also related items. So um, everything that was augmented actually connects to something which already exists in the museum. So, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's sort of a launch pad for uh, education. That's how she would see it. Well, besides artefacts, you and your family, Peter, you've contributed 
uh, so much time and research into your heritage over the years. Which aspects of your heritage do you, would you most wish to see preserved? You know, I think um, the wonderful thing about this collaboration that my aunt and our family has had with NHB and the university is... Um, you know, you might want to give something, but, you know, it, it's wonderful when the institution also sees the value in it. And, you know, the, it's not only about rare and precious things, it's also about the everyday things. And, you know, objects really keep the memories of uh, our society. And without this memory, you know, we are nothing. So um, I, I was very inspired on a trip to Japan to see that they had you know, just um, like community centers in small towns where uh, there would be a storeroom full of things from that town. And it could be anything from fish hooks to uh, typewriters and uh, old stereos. And, um, you know, and I love that feeling how each little community felt the sense to preserve uh, objects from the past. And I think uh, that's where Singapore is going. And I'm so encouraged and I love supporting this idea because every object tells such an important story and many stories. Indeed, there is a shared history to appreciate. Peter, thank you very much for that. I was Peter Lee, family representative of Heritage Patron Awardee and the late philanthropist Agnes Tan.